So we are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk, 1180, 1230 KGEO, 1410 KRI. 1000 KKIM in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and now in the San Francisco Bay Area. Our guest in studio, Sam Young, a local businessman and a Holocaust survivor. So, Sam, you were telling us before the break. So, so naturally, we were there. We were in a place where we never were before. We didn't even know where we are, and we were standing there. No money, no jewelry, no just your clothes money, on no your back. No money, no jewelry, no watches. We didn't even know what time it is. It was in the afternoon sometimes. And while we were standing there, uh, I am guessing, I can't tell you for sure, but we must have been maybe 200 or between 200 and 300 people of women. or, or, or they, We didn't have small children with us, but uh, most of the people were more or less middle-aged people. Mm -hmm. While we were standing there, suddenly people in uh, civilian uniforms with uh, a white armband came and guns and uh, surrounded us and said that we should go. They spoke, uh, when we are talking about the Russian language, there are many different dialects. Uh, the Russians' language, these were Ukrainians, and the Ukrainians were more or less allies with Germany because uh, Hitler promised them that he will create a Ukrainian. So these were Ukrainians, and uh, the, the Russian language, what we spo- they spoke, uh, we spoke a similar or the Russian language, and they told us we should go. As we were going, uh, uh, more or less, uh, my father, who was a physician and also naturally spoke fluently Russian, uh, somehow uh, they found out that he's a physician, and one of these uh, uh, Ukrainians it so happened, had a wife who was very, very sick. And when he, when they took us to the other side of the village into a major far, farm uh, on the other side uh, that was hilly or rolling hills deal, it turned out that originally it was a big farm which belonged to a Graf Lance Koronsky, who owned basically everything in the village and the farms, and he was raising Arab horses. On this particular farm was a big, big barn. I can't tell you exactly how many horses it accommodated, but beautifully built, and... uh, there was a water trough, a long water trough, which was uh, wind uh, uh, on wind farm, and they put us in that uh, in that barn. All three hundred people. All all of the people. Uh, suddenly, uh, when one of these Ukrainians, uh, which turned out that he was. Uh, he has some kind of uh, leadership in the village. When he found out that my father is a physician, he came that my father should go to his house to take uh, to look at his wife. I can't tell you what uh, her sickness was. My father never told me, and I had never asked. But somehow, uh, I think that. Uh, his uh, medical knowledge uh, was impressed this uh, particular guy and uh, when my father talked to him uh, he asked my father asked him if there is any physician in his town uh, he told him that uh, there is a physician a polish physician by <coughs> by the name of dr lachowicz so I I wasn't present at these discussions, but my father convinced him that he should take him down to see this Dr. Lachowicz. 
my father went there and uh, uh, this Dr. Lachovich spoke fluently German and got acquainted with my, with, uh, my father and he told him that he's the only physician in, left in the village and they need physicians very badly and uh, uh, he told my father that he doesn't know what's going to happen with, uh, with all these people. Uh, who who were taken from Hungary, but he wants that we should stay in the village. Hold on one second there, Sam. <coughs> we're having a conversation with Sam uh, Young, a Holocaust survivor. That we should stay in the village. I can't tell you exactly how many days we stayed in this barn because... First of all, every minute looked like a long time, but the situation we was getting a little comf- more comfortable because the manager of this uh, big farm was a Polish guy, and and uh, he was very very helpful, and there were still a few Jews there in the village, and and uh, for some reason when these people. Uh, saw that this uh, leading uh, Russian uh, has contact with my uh, with my father. Uh, they and and because we spoke fluently Russian, we more or less became more or less the leadership of of the group, <coughs> and people treated us relatively relatively better. When I say. Now, Sam, question for you. This doctor, was, is that the doctor whose picture I noticed on your mantle? At yes, home? yes. And, and he, he ended up saving you or holding you from... Pistols, yeah, right? okay. So he just stop me anytime. <laughs> if I am not making myself <laughs> understood, then stop me. And No, no, you're I'm, doing fine. Okay. So anyway, my father had a conversation with this. Uh, Dr. Lachovic, and uh, and we were in this barn, in this barn, and some people brought us some bread, and some people brought us some fruit, and and tried to help us as much as they possibly could, but they didn't have much themselves. But uh, it, it generally they were friendly, friendly, and we stayed in that barn. In the barn, uh, all the horses were gone with the exception of two or three foals, dead foals uh, were, and uh, there was some straw in this uh, deal, so uh, we, we, and it was summertime, so we stayed in this barn. After, I think, about three days, suddenly they came that the group has to go. The, you do it fine, Sam. The the group has to go. Uh, they we didn't know where they have to go or what what's going to happen, but they took the whole group to go someplace. But they came that uh, they came uh, two of these uh, militia people came, and they took us uh, to this Doctor Dalachovich's house. Uh, the house was built. Again, on the side of the hill, and the way it was a fairly large house, and the way the house was built is that uh, if you took about four or five steps, you went on the lower area of the house, and then there were some steps which went up to the upper part of the house. Uh, This uh, Ukrainian policeman took us to this house when we got to when we got to the house when you got to the house when we got to the house uh, to this house uh, suddenly there was a young man uh, who later on we found that his name was Bronek who was a house uh, boy for Dr. Lachovic's house he directed us to the lower part 
of the house, and when we got to the slower part of the house, there was a wooden table and uh, a bench around, and on the table was uh, a jug of milk, uh, uh, milk and uh, boiled eggs. Was it just your family that went to the house? Ju- ju- yes, my father, mother, and I uh, went to the house. So on this table, go ahead, Sam. On this table was uh, bread, uh, a big jug of milk, and quite a few eggs. Now, uh, possibly, I'm guessing maybe a dozen or maybe more. Okay. Eggs. When we come back from the break, let's pick up right there. Okay. We'll be back in a moment on taking care of business on Current Radio News Talk 1180. 